Thank you, Lord. There are some here and those listening and watching who you're lacking some supply. And I'm telling you now, the glory of God is here because the word of the Lord said that when his glory is revealed, we are supplied. We are supplied. Y'all know that scripture? It's the word of the Lord. Mm, mm, mm. But my God shall supply all of our need according to his riches in glory. And glory, the glory of God is here now. And I'm telling you, there are needs represented and God is going to supply your your need before the end of this year, before the end of this year. You know, this is about the fifth time I've heard the Holy Spirit say this to me, and I don't fully understand it, but I believe we will after I say it. The Holy Spirit said this was once a new year. This year, 2021, was once a new year. And now I want you to understand that what is once new, sometimes we get used to it. And then we forsake, okay, thank you. And then we forsake that particular year, just trying to reach forward to the new year. It's not over yet. This was once a new year. Now the Holy Spirit is saying, Uh, 2020, we were looking forward to the new year, which didn't include just the first few days of 2021. It included what? We look forward to the new year from January 1st to December 31st. I told you we were going to get the revelation. So we look forward to the entire new year. So don't give up on this year. It's not hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit is saying, it's not over yet. It's not over yet. This, I like this. Thank you, Holy Spirit. This is 2020's new year. This is 2020's new year. Father, in Jesus' name, as I'm prompted by your Holy Spirit, I pray that whatever we should have gotten in 2021, but for whatever reason, we missed it. Father, I pray you would transfer it into next year. In the mighty and matchless name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, lead and guide us according to the will of God, as you always do anyway. And we will come upon and we will have it to overtake us. And we will grasp, grab, and hold on to and be satisfied and enjoy to the full, as your word says, Father, the promises that you have for us. In the mighty matchless name of Jesus, it's done. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. You can be seated. I thank God for uh, the um, two studies that were done that shows that uh, some people say Omicron, some say Omicron, that variant of the coronavirus, that it is weak. And so I'm hoping, 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 just as those who are doing the research, I hope along with them that all these variants get weaker and weaker and weaker because 40% less people are hospitalized with Omicron than any other variant. 40%. And so they're just hoping that because they say it's going, there will always be a variant, but they're hoping now looking at this thing that it's going to get weak and weak because this is brand new to everybody. This is brand spanking new, this coronavirus, um, SARS and 
All of that is brand spanking new. So let's continue to pray and speak life to people. Amen. Amen. But let's speak death to this thing. And, and listen, it's not going to die, but it will get weaker and weaker and weaker. Yeah. Amen. Amen. All right. I got anybody willing to speak death? You know, did, didn't the word of God say death and life is in the power of the tongue? All right, then. You have to know what, hallelujah, what to speak life to and what to speak death to. Amen. Amen to God. So I have a lot, 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 lot to share today. And I, I'm going to do so kind of fast. So if you're going to take pictures, take pictures. If you're going to watch it later, watch it later. But I got a lot to share because of some things that have happened. So today's message is be a decisive witness. Back in December 2019, I started on the witness series and to, well, not really today, Friday. And just as a little uh, advertisement, this Friday, 1030 p.m. will be our New Year's Eve service. And the message God has given me, I'm so looking forward to it. But this is the last Sunday of the witness series and what God has coming for us is absolutely remarkable. And the way the Holy Spirit has given it to me, we won't have a complete one series for next year, but there, there'll be some times that maybe one or two parts or three or four parts. But I'm telling you, what God is showing me, I can't write fast enough. I can't speak it into my phone fast enough. God is doing some things, and I'm going to tell you something. If you, I was hearing my sister, and I, I talked to her, well, I texted her this morning. If you've been feeling alone, if you've been feeling like you're just so different, you're, everybody else seems to be whatever, but you're, this is the remnant that the Word of God talked about would happen in the last days. And it's not Israel it has nothing to do with Israel. This is last, the final days. And so if you feel alone, if you, I just feel so different. I, it's like I'm not really, you, you can't be popular with the world and be a part of the remnant. What is the remnant? The remnant, those are the ones who say, well, Father, listen, it's, it's, it's just you or it's just nobody. That's just it. I'm just, it's just going to be you or it's going to be nobody else. That's just it. I just trust you. It's just all about you. Because remember, broad is the way that's going to lead to destruction. There are going to be so many people in hell and not as many in heaven at all. That's the word of God. The Bible says narrow is the way. Narrow. Oh, we, going, we got a lot to talk about. We got a lot to talk about. So Matthew 7, 13 says this, enter through the narrow gate for wide is the gate and spacious and broad is the way that leads away to destruction. And many of those who are entering through it. Now I'm going to tell you something. I have never, ever, ever studied this scripture like this ever. Gate here means an access or entrance into any state. And I'm not talking about South Carolina or Texas, a state of mind, a state of finances, a state of personal relationships, any state. It's a gate that leads into that. Now, the way is the traveled road, because once you get in the gate, then you have to travel a particular road. I've been in gated communities before. And once you get through the gate, you have to know which road to take. Okay, y'all got it. Now, mm, mm, mm. but the gate is narrow, and this is what narrow means. Contracted by pressure, and I have another meaning for you as well. And the way is straightened and compressed that leads away to life and few are those who find it. Only a few. 
There are over 8 billion people on the earth today. And as you've heard me say before, from Adam to everybody who has lived and died doesn't even equal the 8 billion who are on the earth today. From Adam and Eve until right now, all those people who have lived and died combined don't equal how many people are alive on the earth today. So with that being said, how many people are actually going to go to heaven? The Bible never said that heaven enlarges herself. But the Bible does say that what? Hell enlarges herself. Some people call hell an organ. It's a living organism. That's a completely different teaching there. So narrow from obstacles standing close about, which means straight. Obstacles. So which obstacles have we engaged in that were meant to act as dense wooded areas designed to keep us on the right path. What are you talking about? I'll tell you what I'm talking about. Narrow is the way. We see, we go, uh, uh, Sheila loves, 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 loves going to um, Edisto Memorial Gardens and walking through that pathway, and they have wooded areas. When I was a little boy, there was a particular pathway that we used to take through the woods. We wouldn't go into the woods, but there was a path there. Have y'all ever walked a path? Yes, sir. That is the way to go. And the reason why the woods are all around is because you're not supposed to go there. God created all of that just so you'll stay on the path. Don't go in the woods. Don't go in the wooded, all the wooded areas came up simply to show you this is the path. In life, there's a lot of stuff. I wonder, I can't see the forest for the trees. Don't look there. Don't get entangled with that. Stay on the path. Yes, sir. I feel so constricted. That's, you know, being saved, you can't do this. Can't Thank God. Because it's leading to death. Yes. There's a way to seem it right into a man. Yes. Oh, shoot, instead of going there, it looked like I could go in the woods and go. That's what happened. We tried that shortcut. Come on. We tried a shortcut to happiness, a shortcut to fame, a shortcut to this, a short. Take the path. Yes. It's already been beaten. Mm. It's a beaten path. Somebody's already walked it. What we want to do is say, come on, Holy Spirit, walk with me. No, you're supposed to follow the Holy Spirit. Yes. Hallelujah. Okay. Yes. Y'all took that great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good. There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Proverbs 14 and 12. Now, Daniel 3, verses 10 through 19. The Hebrew boys. Let's go through this. Thou, O king, <laughs> has made a decree that every man that shall hear the sound of the cornet, flute, gracious day. Wait till I show you something about the flute in a little bit, a particular flute. Gracious. Harp, sackbut, psaltery, and dulcima, and all kinds of music shall fall down and worship the golden image. That is what everybody was commanded to do. And whoso falleth not down and worshipeth, that he should be cast into the midst of a fiery, a burning, fiery furnace. Now, I hate to tell you this, King, but um, there are certain Jews whom thou hast set over the affairs. You gave them a position. Certain Jews whom thou hast set over the affairs of the province of Babylon. Who? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O King, have not regarded thee. They serve not thy gods. I'm so glad we don't serve gods. 
nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar, he didn't get a little messed up. He was in rage. In his rage and fury, commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Because he liked them. He did. He really, you could tell he did. He put them over a part of his kingdom. So is it true, y'all? Do not ye serve my gods? No worship the golden image which I have set up? Now, if ye be ready, that at the time when ye hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psalter, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the image. I'm giving y'all another chance. Which I have made well. But if ye worship not, ye shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. And who is that God? that shall deliver you out of my hands. Feel like a remnant all alone. eh? You don't know who my God is, Mike. So, verse 16, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered (laughs) and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. Do you know what that means? In the original Hebrew, it means, we don't have to tell you why we're not bowing. It literally means, we don't even have to answer you. Why y'all do this? Why, I don't have to answer you. You are all upset and mad and stuff anyway. We are not careful to answer it. What does that mean? Careful? I don't even care to answer you. Ooh, I love it. You have to be, hallelujah. Holy Spirit, touch me before I can say it. We got to be some bold Christians against these people coming against us. I don't have to answer you. So, oh, you got to win them to Christ. No, they mad. They not humble trying to hear more about Jesus. So, here they say, if it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. Oh, I hope they had an attitude when they told him, O king. (laughs) But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that if he doesn't deliver us, we still ain't going to serve your gods. That's the Shane Wall version. Nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. You thought, Kadavian, he was mad then. Oh, no. Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury. That was it. And the form of his visage was changed. His face literally changed. Against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore, he spake and (laughs) commanded that they should heat the furnace one seven times more than it was wont to be heated. And, And just in case you don't know the rest of the story, when the people went to throw Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the furnace, the people that went to go throw them in, they got burned up. It was so hot. They got burned up. The decision has to be made before the music starts. I remember that decades, decades ago, Bishop Brown preached that message. The decision has to be made before the music starts. What music Whatever music the devil is playing in your ear, whatever he's saying to bring fear and serve this and serve that and serve that, serve yourself. You better make the decision because when the music starts, 
Everybody else is bowing. Yes, I'll do what you say. Yes, I do. I ain't fearing none of y'all. Okay, so um, speaking of music and fire, the Travis Scott Astral World tragedy continues to unveil more revelations about these final days that we're living in. God told me that we really need to see what was behind this. If you're not familiar, Travis Scott is, Pastor Avery, is he, is he an R&B singer? Is he a rapper? What is he? He's a rapper. Okay, he's a rapper, and he, had, he sold uh, 100,000 tickets to an event. 50,000 people showed up, and people died. People died. A lot of people were injured, and people died at that event. And I'm going to tell you why, because this is a doozy. I'm going to tell you why they actually died. I don't know if you really looked into this, but when the Holy Spirit told me to look into it, and to be very honest, of course, transparent, I said, this is old news. I said, you know, this happened back, what, November. He said, look into it. I said, okay. So I did, good foot. There is a common demonic strategy these days that's been very active. As an apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ, as I've shared with y'all several times, I have to look at the strategy of the enemy. And when I see the strategy of the enemy, I have to say, okay, Father, what is your counter strategy? Or what was your strategy? And this is the enemy's counter strategy against it. Goodness gracious. So I want you to see this. Where's this music? The sound. Panicking. Fans rushing through the gates. A woman desperately pleading for the concert to stop. People started panicking. You know, there were people kind of, I think, trying to get over the rails to the stage. There were people climbing things. There's so much chaos. Hundreds of people around me were screaming bloody murder, like, help, help, get us out. The crowd began to, to compress towards the front of, of the stage, okay? And that caused some panic, and it started causing some injuries. People began to fall out, uh, become unconscious, and it created additional, additional panic. Panic, 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 panicking, panic. And that's, that's just a couple of the reports. It's all over the place. Panic, panic, panic. It's a demon. It is literally a demon. And I'm going to show you some things that I need you to understand the power that we have over what I'm about to show you. But I'm going to tell you now, this is no joke. It is no joke. I want you to see the demon. There is a panic demon that has been released in the earth. I'm not just talking about the coronavirus. No, no, no. This had nothing to do with the coronavirus at all. Yes, that has caused some panic, and I'm going to show you why. And it's just going to continue. Okay, that event is over. Panic didn't die. Panic did not die. So, this is the god, the Greek god, Pan. Which is, look it up for yourself, which is where the word panic came from. So, as you see, he has a flute. So, his girlfriend or whatever left him. So he went to Zeus. All of this stuff is not true. It's just what they say. Went to Zeus. And so Zeus cast a spell on her. And then she turned into reeds, which is like hollow type of um, wooded areas of things. And so then he was just so angry. Pan was so angry until he took the reeds and just broke them all up. She turned into reeds and he broke them all up. And then he felt badly. And so then he gathered the reeds, a few of them, 
and just blew his breath over him, just crying and whatever. And so it became that flute. Gracious. Gracious. So Pan, panic, of course, comes from the name of the Greek god Pan, who supposedly sometimes caused humans to flee in unreasoning fear. So now when you hear a God, you already know it's actually a what? A spirit, a demon. Okay? Now. Also, Pan is lusty. And he likes loud music. That is funny on a level or two or three. (laughs) He likes loud music. Now, consider the astral world. Consider it. Everybody's saying panic, panic, panic. The God of Pan likes loud music, likes to have people uh, panicking. In fact, he likes loud music, chaotic noise in general. So what other word uses the same definition for the prefix Pan that causes humans to flee in unreasoning fear that comes from the same root word that comes from the same God. Pandemic. Unreasoning fear. So, this clip it's been viewed so many millions of times. And this is this boy. He was about to die. We're going to listen to him in a little bit. And he's telling the people, stop the show. But that man, just a cameraman, he can't stop the show. He almost died. And we're going to see it. He attended the concert with one of the people, Brianna. And she was um, one of the ones I couldn't get up for the longest. There was, we, no one really could get up. There was no one moving. The, the music was going and people were jumping and dancing and and, and mostly the people in our area were just like trying not to fall in, but you know, you can't help it when the crowd, the ripple effects amongst the crowd is like mush, like pushing people in on top and you're just like suffocating. You're like counting your last breaths. Yeah, and you did too. Yes, and um, I went to a state where I accepted that I was gonna die. Yeah. What does that even mean? It, it means that I didn't really see a, a way out. I didn't see a way out. If only, only God could help me in that scenario. If and that's exactly what happened. I prayed to Him, prayed for Him to to accept me into heaven. You know, um, accepting Him as my Lord and Savior, and uh, forgiving my sins. And I prayed over my friends and friends and family and my friends that were there that they would make it out safely. Um, and I, uh, at the end, asked them if maybe I can, you know, continue, if I can have a, another chance and to live and by him. Begging for his life, your life, essentially. Yeah. And he gave me a second chance. He gave me a second chance. He was there at this event, and he was down on the ground, and people jumping all over people. If you watch his entire um, interview there, you will see people. He said, we were just jumping up and down on people. People were on me. And I happened to look up at a friend of mine, and he happened to catch my eye and pulled me up. Just happened to catch my eye. and pulled. That's why I didn't die. These people going to this concert and he knew he's like listen I'm about to die father just accept me and if I started praying Lord forgive me I receive you as my personal Lord and Savior you heard him now if you know that much you know good and well you shouldn't have been there number one I'm not Jesus I don't judge, but I do know what the word of God says. Now, you have to receive Jesus Christ because you want to live for him. 
I heard somebody say, oh, yeah, it's easy to die for God, but it's not easy to live for God. Oh, yeah, it's easy. Oh, Lord, I'm about to die. Lord, just I receive you into my life. I tried to find him because I wanted to minister to this guy. Of course, he's known all over the world now. But I wanted to find him, but I, I, I couldn't find him because I wanted to find out, listen, how can I help you, man? Because you done made a public declaration. And I want to make sure, you know, I'm, unless the Lord stop me, I want to find that dude right there and minister to him. So you can't make no public declaration. Now you're going back out there doing what you're doing, dude. Just cannot. Just cannot. Okay. Now, eight people dead and several are injured at a music festival in Houston. So, how many flames do you count? How many flames? You count eight flames? Oh. Did they... Did they put those eight flames up way after the event was over? This was an event literally to draw people so that there would be human sacrifice. That is why those eight flames were there. This former witch said, I could see everything that was happening. She saved now, loves the Lord. And she said, this was a satanic ritual. So many people are calling it a satanic ritual. But the eight flames represented the reported eight deaths that evidently had to take place at the event. Had to take place at the event that day for some nonsense satanic sacrifice, as millions of people are now believing, two people who were injured there died later after being transported to a medical facility. Eyewitnesses say that people started pushing forward towards the stage with such force that people didn't even have space to expand their lungs to breathe. I mean, how, how small is that? Less than an inch? Couldn't breathe. I mean, jam-packed. Everybody started pushing forward. So you're like this. And then some people couldn't breathe, so they passed out. And what you're going to do but step on them because people are moving you forward or else you're going to fall. That's what Aiden was trying to uh, portray and was testifying about. Then have space to expand their lungs to breathe. So they fainted. People were urged, jump up and down, even on top of those who had fallen to the ground. All of these factors and others caused eight deaths on the scene. The best time to review a tragedy is when the event ends and eyewitnesses' testimonies are presented. Holy Spirit said to me, you need to see what's behind this panic. But I needed to know what, what started all of this. I needed to know. So let's go behind the curtain, so to speak. Evil spirits work very well together, almost too well. So you have the spirit of panic working with another spirit of pride. And then you, 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 you have the spirit of um, ego which is almost like pride, but I have pride because I have an ego. And so all these things working together, he wasn't stopping no show. And then somebody, he said, what's going on there? Hey, y'all help that person. Then he saw an ambulance in the crowd. What was happening? What's going on? And then several people with their phones saw him looking at a dead person and still singing. See a dead person there. So... What drew the people forward? That was my question to the Holy Spirit. What drew the people forward toward the stage to get a closer view? No. I mean, you're already so far behind. How much closer are you going to get? Maybe a few feet? 
what is that really going to do for your view? How much closer can you really get when it was already jam-packed? So what did moving forward mean to them? Ooh, I'm about to show you. The psychology used in signs and designs is well planned to reach the goal of getting human beings to respond the way the designer of the presentation, of the ad, of the stage, of wherever you are. Amen. What they desire and expects the prospects to respond. What does all of that mean? Okay, well, let's, let's look at this 99-cent KFC snacker. Everything looks pretty okay, right? Probably make you a little hungry here on Sunday morning. So, what psychological subliminal message are they giving you here? What's the subliminal message here? Eat it? No, no, no. Oh, so y'all missed the dollar bill right there. The subliminal, it's only a dollar. It's only a dollar. So that is the subliminal message. You don't even see it, but your subconscious sees it, and they know this through psychology. So it makes you want it. That's a dollar bill. So much so that they made them stop doing stuff like that, but some people still doing it. So I can see a sign. I can see a design that's going to make me do something. Like 99 cents, it's just a dollar. And I see a dollar attached to something that I want. So, you know, I'll, I'll get it. So sounds have that same effect from your favorite song coming on the radio. I don't care if you worried about something. You hear that song, what does it do? It immediately changes your disposition and your physical position. You could be thinking about, ooh. You're happier now? Your body movements have changed. Even a smoke alarm going off. Something about sound. That will immediately change your disposition and physical position. This is one reason I stress only listening to music that will lift Jesus higher and cause worship and praise to God. So, watch this. This is what they played hours, seven hours before this event, that noise. Seven hours. A lot of us were asking, what was that music they were playing for seven hours? Well, this was nauseating, listening to this over and over and over, and honestly scary. Yogi, 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 yogi. Seven hours before it started. Beginning, as the Holy Spirit said, beginning to cast the spell, getting you ready. You know what that was? Breaking up the fallow ground, breaking up the hard ground, breaking it up, getting ready for what was about to, as if you look it up, because I've done it several times to be sure, entertainment means to be detained so something can enter you. So, people started getting nauseated. Everybody like, what in the world? What are they doing? Listen, I have done well over a million dollars worth of work in the music industry. I have been at I don't know how many concerts. I have designed and been the promoter of I don't know how many concerts. And you don't have to do that. 
You don't have to do any of that to check for anything ever. So, here's the sign. See you on the other side. And you see the circles leading into that cave, which draws you in. It's all planned. All planned. Oh, my goodness. So then, when everything gets to the point, you can't help but move forward. You've had a sickening sound for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours, and you're looking at this thing. So what else are you going to do? Why were they moving forward? Uh, mass hypnosis is done with imagery and symbols that are mostly ignored by the active mind, but speak directly to the subconscious mind. It's a type of hypnosis. As they've studied this whole event after everything was over. And this is Dylan Charles, the editor of Waking Times. So now you can see what's on the other side. Why people are pushing forward. And you, you like, hey, stop all the pushing. I can't. I can't stop. So, Rolling Stone. Rolling Stone? Really? A secular magazine? Says Satan, not Travis Scott, is to blame for Astroworld tragedy. Tick tock. Geniuses declare. Really? Rolling Stone? Not Rolling Stone, not the Rolling Stone magazine. Some videos on the platform, which have received more than a million views, claim eight deaths were the result of demons. There are your eight flames. Eight people died on the scene. It was a pre praise to Satan. And you know, I don't have this confirmed, but I'm going to tell you what I believe. I don't think Travis Scott was the one that initiated this. I think he was just put up to do it. I think somebody or some group was behind this telling you. I think they just used his event and organized it as such. I don't think he was dumb to it, though. I don't think he was dumb to it at all. I looked at his confession. Just look at it. Make, make up your own mind. When I say confession, his confessing of being so sorry, everything happened. Look at it and see what you discern. So this is Rolling Stone magazine. I'm going to tell you what really tripped me out. Do y'all remember KISS? Y'all remember this group? This rock group? KISS. Their album entitled Nights in Satan's Service. So, here we have, and see, these are the same people who, whenever their first comic book came out, they went, and all four of them, all of the original members, had their blood drawn and they went to the Marvel Studios and had their blood injected into the red paint. You can look it up. They, they confess, yeah, we did it. They're proud of it. Had their blood injected into the red paint that was on the first copy of their comic book. So that's these people right here. So when we look at Ace Fraley from that group, this is what he tweeted out on to Monique and Laura in regard. Now, in regard to what happened in Houston, Texas, our prayers go out to all the families who lost loved ones at the con concert. Seems like it was a satanic ritual of all people. Kiss would know. Seems like a satanic ritual. What? Gone very wrong. There'll be, and as Dijon to blood that out, 
H-E-L-L, to pay for everyone who let those kids die. All people of every faith and religion should band together to stop this from ever happening again in America. God bless. And he's showing his socks. He likes to show his socks on his post when he's watching TV or whatever. Not today, Satan. Okay. So, this is one of the Astral World events right here. Everybody going into Travis Scott's mouth. Now, there is an artist who is very, very famous in the 16th century for very odd religious paintings, very odd religious paintings. And so he did a religious painting depicting hell right there. Dutch painter and draftsman, Hieronymus Bach depiction of hell. Y'all see any similarities? See you on the other side. And the Holy Spirit said, look into it, look into it. And I'm going to tell you something. When I found this, and then I said, this, I think this, is, this message took me the longest in my entire life of getting messages together because of all the hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours of research I did. Then I saw a video. Somebody else paired these two together as well. I was like, so I'm not the only one seeing this. I am not the only one seeing this. Now, let's leave that and go here. The United Nations. Did y'all see this? A guardian for international peace and security sits on the visitor's plaza. And this, this just happened last month. Outside the UN headquarters, the guardian is what they call it, is a fusion of jaguar and eagle and donated by the government of that name, Mexico. It is created by artists Jacoba and Maria Angelis. That beast of a thing right there represents peace and security. Well, now, you know, the, the, the Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 5 and 3, when people are saying all is well and secure and there is peace and safety, then in a moment, unforeseen destruction, ruin, and death will come upon them as suddenly as labor pain come upon a woman with child, and they shall by no means escape, for there will be no escape. So really, of all places, the United Nations, would display such a beast? How does this statue represent peace? Let's watch Look at the this. book of Daniel written 2,500 years ago as it, with great detail, talks of this beast that will be manifest in the last days. And four great beasts came up from the sea, each different from the other. The first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. The same beast was described in the 2,000-year-old book of Revelation. Now the beast which I saw was like a leopard, his feet were like the feet of a bear, and his mouth like the mouth of a lion. So let's look closely at this multicolored United Nations symbol of peace. It looks like a leopard, its feet look like the feet of a bear, its mouth is like the mouth of a lion, and it has eagle's wings. Is this just some weird coincidence? Or is it just another sign of the end of the age just before the coming of Christ? When the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance on those who do not know God and on those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. If you're not a Christian, please obey the gospel of Jesus Christ. Repent and trust in him for forgiveness of sins. If you're a Christian, you know that the time is short. So redeem the time make time to pray, and reach out to this lost and dying world. Let's now look at the book of Daniel written 2,500 years ago as it, with great detail, talks of this. 
I said, wow. I looked at this, did we? And as you see, I'm not the only one who is finding this stuff. These are the last days. These are the final days. Some of I never saw that. I, I, I never saw that beast. That's why God told me you got to prepare them. You have to prepare the people for the second coming of Jesus Christ. So you can see all of the prophecies in Daniel, in Revelation, during the final days, the last days, it's coming up now. The new UN statue doesn't have to be exactly as described because the Bible says that those descriptions are as or like the, the this of this or like the that or as the, the, the feet of a bear, like this. Those animal parts, not the actual parts themselves, it's enough that the statue looks like it does because it is a foreshadow of what is to come. And of course, the United States is a part of the United Nations. So, your life work assignment. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Matthew 24 and 12. Y'all haven't seen it yet, I'm telling you. Verse 13, but he that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. You think people talking about you and people treating you a certain way. Oh, no, that that's almost nothing. You see what you've experienced with how people treated you is nothing compared to how people will treat you. People can repent now for not treating you with love. But I'm telling you what's coming. When the love waxes cold, Matthew 24, 12, when it waxes cold, there will virtually be no repenting, which leads to reprobated minds. The worst is yet to come. And verse 13, only those who endure to the end shall be saved. We're not going around here having problems with trees and cars and our problem isn't food, it's people. In these final days, love of many going to wax cold and hard. Not only am I doing this to you, but I don't care. You're right, it's already happening. I don't even care. Goes past that, and I'm right. I'm, the way I'm treating you, I'm right. That's why the Holy Spirit said to me, they're going to have reprobated minds. What's a reprobated mind? I literally think I'm right. Just as wrong as the Bible says you're wrong, but I literally think I am right. And I'm on my way to heaven. Look it up. That's what a reprobated mind means. I don't care. I'm right. And I'm on my way to heaven. And he just is wrong as can be. Just as wrong as they can be. So get alone and make an unwavering commitment to God with a no matter what happens mindset. Father, I don't care what happens. I'm going to serve you. I don't care who treats me like what. I don't care what tries to get me to panic, that God of panic. I don't care what happens. I'm going to serve you. Do y'all remember Jesus saying to Peter, upon this rock, I will build. He just got into Caesarea Philippi, which is so important. Who do y'all say I am? This one, that one. Who, 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 who do men say that I am? Oh, some say you're Elias. Some say you're this. Well, who do you say I'm? Peter say you're the Christ. Son of, up upon this rock, I'm going to build my church. And the gates of hell should not prevail against it. The gates of hell has nothing to do with where people are right now burning. 
The gates of hell has nothing to do with, the Bible says, uh, hell will enlarge it, nothing to do. It was a literal place, and you can go visit it right now. That was called the gates of hell. It is still in Caesarea Philippi right now. Which is what? You're, 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 you're nodding your head. You know, shaking your head, nodding your head. You know what? You know what happened there? There is a temple dedicated to Pan. The pan God. And a gateway into hell. I said, well, if this whole Travis Scott thing and everything else, it all adds up. The gates of hell. You have to go through the gate, my mouth, to go in. Just like Heronius Bach, the 16th century artist had hell, people going into the mouth. The gates of hell will not prevail against it. There were other gods, temples there as well, but Pan, of course, was the most famous one. Look it up. You can go on YouTube, you can go on Google, and you'll be able to almost walk through and see the entire thing. So please get along with God and say, Father, I don't care what happens. No matter what happens, I make a commitment to you because things are about to get worse. Ooh, thank God for 2022. It's not going to get better. You could almost call it the year 2020 slash C. It's not going to get better. The love of many waxing cold. You thought people came against you now. And then, are you going to deny Jesus? And then when you get before him, he's going to deny you because it's not going to be easy. I'm going to tell you, it's not going to be easy. Some people are already not witnessing. You sure don't want to witness. Oh, they could say all kinds of stuff. They people are really bashing Christians. It's going to get worse. Everything is lined up. Is Jesus coming next year? I don't know. Everything that the... You can pick any last day scripture, end time scripture, and just look at it and look at what's happening today. Yeah. Any one of them. Yeah. Yeah. Any one of them. With all this stuff going on, you have got to be a decisive witness because that's the only way you're going to stand. That's the only way to get to heaven. Make a decision before the music starts. Make a decision. I'm going to tell you, some of y'all, you're going to be faced with who do you actually serve. It could mean your job. It could mean your relationship. It could mean your status. Oh, China already has a digital currency. And they are commanding everybody else. You got to get this digital currency. Got to get it. They just bought it out and have already done billions of dollars with digital currency that will soon be placed where? For ease. Let me go ahead and, and scan you here. You go in some places now because of coronavirus, they're, they're, they're scanning you here and they're scanning you there. Oh, y'all better see what's happening. I'm telling you now. And so you're going to be just used to it. Just simply scan. What did, what did the word of God say in Revelation? You won't be able to buy or sell unless you have the mark of the beast in your right hand or your forehead. Oh, oh let, me, let me scan your temperature, e either, your, either your hand or your, or your forehead. After a while, you'll be going in stores and, just, uh, and you go up to the beep. You won't be able to buy or sell unless you have the mark. Yeah, I got the vaccine. I'm fully vaccinated. But the devil is a liar. They're they talking about putting a chip in your hand. No, no. If you don't know how to read this actual paper, 
that says I'm vaccinated? The devil, y'all ain't going to put a, a dog on thing, a chip in my hand to show I'm vaccinated? No. Mm-mm-mm. You can't travel no more. I, I, I preach from my house. So, Father, we come before you by Jesus Christ, and we just love you and bless you and praise you and thank you and glorify you and magnify you because, Lord, this stuff doesn't scare us. None of it. And if, if, it, if it is frightening to some, Father, I thank you for just simply, that's just your power convicting their hearts to live right, and that's all, or, or to search themselves because you told us to do right. You don't do that right. You told us to do right. And we thank you that, that Jesus can literally live through us only if we allow him. Only if we allow him. And so thank you, Father, for the hours and hours and hours that it took to do the research for just these minutes of presentation. It was worth Every bit of it staying up late, all nine yards. Worth it, Lord, just to inform those who are here and those who are listening and watching. And Father, I literally bow in your presence. Father, thank you, God. I am so serious. Thank you for letting us know about all of this stuff. We didn't know. Thank you, Father, for allowing your Holy Spirit to just literally lead and guide me to find and put things together and, and looking for more, finding somebody else had already put it together and somebody else had already, and somebody else is saying this, Lord God, you're just so perfect. Now, we're not going to see this on TV just widespread like this. We're just not. We're not going to see the large ministries preach this because it's just, it's just not what they do, Lord. And you know, one of the scariest scriptures to me, Lord, honestly, is I'm just talking to you here, is when Jesus told the disciples, I preach in parables so they won't get it, but just so only you'll get it. Father, there, there, there are a lot of people who just won't get it. And Jesus knew. He knew they, they, they weren't going to live. They weren't going to live for him. These people who came against him, they, they weren't trying to learn of, of, of his messianic call and cause. They didn't even believe he was the Messiah. So many of his disciples left him. I'm not talking about even the original 12. The others who followed him and were students, as disciple means students, students of his, your word says they left him, just left him. And there are disciples now leaving you, Jesus, just leaving you. Trying to blame the pandemic. No, they wanted to leave all the time, just using it as an excuse. It's clear. We can see the fruit, but you're the one that's going to judge. Help us all, God. So we make a decision. We're going to be a decisive witness, which means we're going to decide to just simply follow you. That's it. Thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, would you bow your heads and pray? Because there's some people who aren't saved. And those who are here, those listening and watching, if you're watching because somebody shared it, you share it also because people need to know what's going on. I know some people are going to say, oh, that oh, one of the old rides at Astro World was a clown and you walked into his mouth to get into the ride. OK, all right. But this wasn't a clown. Lord. Father God, people are always trying to disprove what you're clearly showing us. Clearly showing us. So if you're not saved, please give God your life. Just don't even think, well, do I need to? Or if you have to think that thought, that means you need to go ahead and pray. Let's just pray. If you're not saved or if you don't know Jesus or you need to come back, just renew your relationship with God and please let's move forward. Remember, don't look in the woods 
The woods are there to keep you on the path. That's why you only have this one path. All those woods, leave the woods alone. Don't go on down, chopping down the trees so you can have a broad way. That way is already made and it's going to lead to destruction. Many people already found that way and they're going. Lord, thank you, Jesus. So if you're not saved, just simply repeat after me and say, Father, I come before you right now in Jesus' name. I confess all my sins. I know Jesus died for me. And I know you raised him from the dead. Raise me now from the death of all my sins. Live your life through me, Jesus. And yes, I will allow you to. Thank you, Father, for saving me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you, Lord.